Hello guys, uh, good morning. This is Erkin from HDD Recovery Services. I'm gonna be doing a couple of uh, raid recoveries today. I got um, two I got two of them yesterday that uh, are three drives each, RAID 5 configuration. And I also have the one that I did the vlog about a couple of days ago, I believe. It's the um, Seagate Fast uh, RAID 0 configuration, only two, uh, two and a half inch drives that I've already gone ahead and calculated what the um, arrangement between the two would be. So up here, uh, I'm, I've been imaging a few drives yesterday and uh, the ones that got fans on them just been running a little hot so I just decided to cool them off a little bit. So these two drives right here on channel 1 and 0 are the two drives from um, Seagate Fast configuration. So uh, Seagate Fast, uh, because it only consists of two drives, I already disconnected the um, sources. So these are only targets. And uh, we're going to use these targets uh, to merge them together into one volume so that the data can be ac accessed. Um, up here, I have my uh, one of the RAID 5s that I'm going to be working on today. So this is drive 1, this is drive 2. Um, and uh, on this channel here, on another PC3000 Express, I have uh, drive 3. These were fairly simple uh, RAID 0 config. I will stitch them just uh, using UFS Explorer or uh, our studio. I'll post both of the links to the tools in the description if you're interested in getting uh, something like this for yourself. It's extremely useful to have them. So we're gonna stitch uh, those two drives together using the UFS Explorer Professional Recovery uh, Utility Set. What we have here on the left hand side is all the connected storages and uh, we have our local drive which is a um, 850 EVO for uh, our operating system. We have the uh, Two, I mean, one terabyte um, Toshiba for PC3000. We have a three terabyte Toshiba for uh, data extractor. And uh, these two drives right here are grayed out. These drives have been mounted using um, uh, universal utility in PC3000. And uh, currently they're appearing as raw partitions. On their own, they don't have any data in them that we can browse and find. If I would have let that uh, drive, each one of these drives individually scan for the entirety of the pro pro project, uh, we would probably come up with a bunch of truncated data that doesn't make any sense. But together, combined into a single volume, they will create a four terabyte partition. And I went ahead and I used WinHex uh, to find the order and uh, the block length of um, the volume. So it's a pretty straightforward process when you're dealing with RAID 0 because there is no soaring, you just need to know which drive is first, what the offset is and how big the blocks are. All of these three things I've determined previously and I have them written down right here. So um, in order to build a virtual RAID we're gonna just select build RAID option here and on the uh, in this menu right here we're gonna drag and drop our drives. So um, I don't know if it actually allows the drag and drop, but it there. If you right click on each one of these objects here, you can add them to the RAID. So it says add to RAID. We're gonna add drive number three because that's the first one, and we're gonna add number five. That's the second one. Now uh, up here in virtual RAID configuration, we can select what type of RAID we want to build. Uh, right now it's set to RAID five we need to set it to RAID 0, which is a stripe without redundancy, okay? The next step is selecting the stripe size. That determines for how long each drive will be used for. And in our situation, it's going to be custom. And the custom number will be eight sectors. Starting from sector zero, that's our offset. There is no offset really if it's zero, but they start right from the start from the beginning. And right here, we're just going to hit this button build. 
Once the raid is put together, we will want to go ahead and start looking for file structures. I know for a fact that this device has a HFS plus uh, file system, so that's the only thing that I'm going to be looking for, and we're going to start searching for it. And there it is. It just came up. So it begins slightly further into the process. At this point, we can stop this because it's going to start looking for additional uh, file systems which don't exist on the unit. And right here, it, I don't know if you guys would be able to see it, but right here, the capacity for the uh, partition uh, comes up to 3,725 3, gigabytes. So both of these drives are two terabytes each. So um, individually, they simply cannot make up that big of a volume, but combined, they will make that volume up. So how uh, RAID 0 works is basically um, if you have a drive number 1 and you have a drive number 2, on its own, it has gaps. Between the fingers, there's a gap, right? Um, this gap gets fulfilled with the stripe. So individually, your data looks like this, but combined, they merge and the data is, appears to be as a single set. So right here we have our HFS plus partition and if we were to explore it we can see the file structure is intact and if we're gonna go into evaluate uh, consistency and the size of uh, the information uh, it's performing quick calculation of how much space is taken up by this data that's on the device and it will give us the number. Once we have that number, we can just select everything that we need out of the file structure and begin copying it. It's going to be safe to do so because right now the data is already on target drives that we created the images onto. The consistency is pretty good. It shows that there is um, 42,500 files in 339 folders and combined capacity of that stuff uh, comes up to 554 gigs. So that's how it works uh, with RAID 0. Right now I have two RAID 5s which consist of three drives each and uh, I already created the images for uh, one of them, currently creating the images for the second one and uh, the one that I already got the images for will have to undergo the same procedure. Before the end of the day once I figure out the order, the block and uh, see what kind of results we're going to yield Hopefully everything is going to go according to plan and we're going to see some file structure that we can begin copying the data from.